We say today that we as fundamentalists have always respected the person of a child. David Hiles set out to follow in his father's footsteps, but his zest for women cost him his pulpit and his first marriage. When David left a Texas church in disgrace, he and his girlfriend, Brenda Stevens, moved to Bolingbrook, Illinois, with her two children by her first marriage. It wasn't long before her youngest son, 17-month-old Brent Stevens, came to the attention of abuse investigators. In 1985, they found him with a broken leg plus eight or nine bones in various stages of healing. Paul Cialino was a homicide investigator for the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. He and his team fought, unsuccessfully, to keep Brent away from David and Brenda. I wasn't concerned this child was going to be abused again. I was concerned this kid was going to wind up dead. That was my concern. His concern was justified. A few months later, Brent Stevens was found dead in his crib. Due to bureaucratic bungling, an inconclusive autopsy was done at a hospital instead of the morgue. But at the inquest, David Hiles invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Brenda, the mother of the dead child, was a no-show. As for the status of the investigation... This case is an open case still today. And nothing's been done. Can anything be done with this? Absolutely. It's a murder case. I would even go further and say that if I could get David and Brenda in a court of law, they'd both get convicted of murder, without a doubt. I have a dead child with a history of abuse, and I had two people who were the only people to access that child that night. And I would almost bet that 12 of their peers would convict them on almost that evidence alone. The great fundamentalist who's often invited to preach in Michigan churches has all but ignored the stain on his ministry and people's lives left by the philandering of his son, David Hiles. The younger Hiles had been the pastor of the Miller Road Baptist Church in Garland, Texas, until a janitor found photos of David Hiles having sex with a deacon's daughter. David's ex-wife Paula later confided in another pastor about her then-husband's illicit affairs with women in the Texas congregation. She didn't know he was taping the call. All these women in our church thought they were the one and only. Well, when they came out that there were 14 or 15 of them, we got had a how war going on there. Jack Hiles ignored his son's adultery until a Christian on the lookout for sin found photos of David's second wife in some porn and swinger magazines. Brenda Hiles' holy temple was on display in a variety of explicit poses in magazines like Adam and Chicago Swingers. The photos were accompanied by ads seeking men, ladies, or couples for group sex. Dave Froelich went to Hiles Anderson College with Brenda. That at the moment you see her face, you'll know, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. That is, in fact, Brenda. You've seen the photograph. This Michigan businessman, we'll call him Fred, knows Dave and Brenda Hiles well. That's Brenda Hiles. Yep. I feel, I feel badly for her. I think she's been used in the worst, worst kind of way. Jack Hiles was forced to face the bare facts from the pulpit when Sherrillville, Indiana, attorney Voyle Glover, a former Hiles follower, put the photos on a flyer and led a Hiles loyalist to believe they'd be distributed at Hiles' 1991 pastor school. I was totally shocked. I could not believe the sin the board committed. They're going to walk up and try to hand you something. I'd prefer you wouldn't look at it. It is absolutely the most revolting, disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life, but it's true. My wife would leave on weekends. This man says his former wife was used by David and Brenda Hiles in their group sexcapades. It destroyed his marriage and his ex-wife's life. My wife became intimately involved with both David and Brenda and numerous other men in the church that Dr. Hiles had endorsed as being uh, spiritually astute people. A number of people, because I know them personally, I went to Dr. Hiles about the actions of his son and uh, for whatever reason, he failed to act. He failed to restrain his son. In March, one of Hiles' deacons, A.V. Ballinger, was convicted on charges he molested a seven-year-old girl in Sunday school. A lawsuit by the girl's family charges Hiles told the parents that Deacon Ballinger 
just likes little girls. Another Hiles protege, Earl Reeves, the pastor of the Lighthouse Baptist Temple in San Diego, California, spent eight years in prison for molesting young women and grade school girls in his congregation. In Petersburg, Virginia, Calvary Park Baptist Church youth minister Jeffrey Gerald pled guilty to charges he had sex with 11 young girls from his congregation. Gerald was a graduate of the Hiles Anderson Bible College in Sherrillville, Indiana. A.B. Ballinger should not be judged in the courts of Hammond. He should be judged by wise people in the First Baptist Church of Hammond, if he's judged at all. You and I cannot capitulate. You and I cannot tuck our tails and run. We must stand up and be counted. We have been viciously and maliciously misrepresented. They have attacked us at our strongest point, and that is our belief in purity, our love for children, and our compassion. We are indignant, righteously indignant, because we have been misrepresented. I want two things clearly understood. As a group of people, we are appalled to the very quick of our hearts and souls at the innuendo or the thought that we would either cover up or that we would in any respect encourage improper conduct towards a child. But we will not idly stand by and let accusations be hurled. Accusations that are not true. There's not a person in my church who would not be appalled at doing anything harmful to a child. And I believe your churches are the same way. And let me stop and say, our churches are run better than the newspapers who criticize our churches. May I say that we work harder to make sure that we're producing excellence. I, I would, I, I'd ask you press men, if somebody slandered you, I wonder if you could within 10 days gather a crowd like this from all over America to defend you. To be very clear and forceful with my message, frankly, we are mad. We're mad because we've been misrepresented by lies. Our only guilt is our suffering because of a sacred and spiritual sacrifice. 1 Peter 2.20 says, For what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? 
But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. You cannot accuse us of not being patient. We've done well and our good has been evil spoken of. But now we're mad. We're, nad, we're mad at a media trying to break out a series of alleged charges against our churches. We're mad at reporters, the press, news clips put together by the media who seem to have no ethical depth of how low they'll go to hurt our churches and our church members of America. We say today that we as fundamentalists have always respected the person of a child. There is not a group of people in this world today as clean as the men in this room. Because, and I hold the press guilty, because of the press, I've had to announce to my people from now on, it'll be a handshake instead of a hug. How pitiful. Thank God I make an honest living. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.